was going up from town I met the grain trains rolling down Every day a hundred trains Every train a hundred cars Every car a hundred tons Every ton a hundred sacks Every sack ten thousand grains And that's what cities get from trains Some politicians lacking brains Said in voices dripping sweet We don't really need these trains Railroads all are obsolete Their union strong, it makes demands They guard their yards with railroad dicks Who kick our cops clean off their lands Do not like our politics As I was going up from town I met the grain trains rolling down Every day a hundred trains Every train a hundred cars Every car a hundred tons Every ton a hundred sacks Every sack ten thousand grains And that's what cities get from trains So the politicians passed some laws to screw more money off the trains and deeper dip their pudgy paws in more control of railroad gains. The railroad said, get off our land. They went on strike to show their peak. The green train stopped their rolling and the city starred within a week. As I was going up from town, I met the rain trains rolling down every day. A hundred trains, every train, a hundred cars, every car, a hundred. Every ton, every ton, a hundred sacks, every sack, ten thousand grains, and that's what cities get from trains. Door and all those fat politicos were killed and eaten by the poor. And with the city out of joint and no more politician men, the railroad said they proved their point and sent the grain trains down again. As I was going up from town, I met the grain trains rolling down every day. A hundred trains, every train, a hundred cars, every car, a hundred tons, every ton, a hundred sacks, every sack, ten thousand grains. And that's what cities get from trains. Good morning, wandering beekeeper here. How you doing? We are up, we are about, it is 8 a.m., I am caffeinated, medicated, and ready to roll. Let us get this thing rolling. Speaking of which, we are going to be looking at some different rolling stock this morning. Let me pop over to the game screen and get Minecraft going here, and we are standing at a platform. This is MTR, Minecraft Transit Railway. It is based very heavily on the Hong Kong MTR system. It is designed for building realistic railways in Minecraft. I am just starting to learn to use it, which is why it looks like shit. Um, Y'all know that there is an adult warning on this stream for language and drug references and who knows what other mischief and untowardness I may get. Oh, look at that. Our panel has lit up and we are standing on platform one at West Burnside Station. Um, over there is Burnside Station. Here comes the train. This is a Hong Kong Airport Express train. I'm going to walk up toward the other end of the platform, as people are sometimes wont to do. You know, you walk up, uh, you follow the train, and try and get a good seat. You know. And the announcements are automatic. This station is West Burnside. The, 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 this train is going to West Burnside because we're doing the West Loop. Now we're going to be varying our speed. I have yet to get the hang of the speed controls. My deceleration zones are not nearly long enough. We're gonna be taking some curves. 
A little fast. Fortunately, derailment does not seem to be a thing in this mod. Yes, we're doing 200 kph here. We're doing, we're, we're doing like bullet train. Going faster almost than the landscape can load. We're outrunning the chunk loader. MTR, you do not build trains. I did not build this train, I just selected it from a menu. Decided, okay, I'm gonna run this particular type of train on this track. For MTR, yeah, there's your station announcements. Those are automatic. You will see them while we are we will see them while we are aboard the train. There's only a, like a five second dwell time at each platform. Um, I'm going to be running this fair. Uh, we're going to be going around this fairly quickly. But yeah, that's it's it's Minecraft uh, landscape outside of this train. Yes, we can sit in the seats. It doesn't quite work the same way. You have to just kind of punch the shift key once briefly. Don't hold down the left shift. You will force a dismount from the train. The station is Walrus. I take no responsibility for the names of the stations. They were whatever I came up with randomly off the top of my head, out my ear, pulled it out my ass. I don't know. Sear, I used to tell people I got my ideas at Sears Bargain Basement, but nobody knows what a bargain basement or even a Sears is these days. It's it's a very dated reference, and I can't, I can't make that joke anymore. I really understand the, the trope of the immortal who speaks in a mishmash of 400 years worth of yeah, we're doing a little slalom here. On our way on out to the end of the line, I had to do a few slaloms to, to get the line over to where I needed it. We do kick up to 160 for a minute here, and we are flat trucking. MTR's trains are the fast way to get across the overworld. There is no question. Um, these trains will f will go full on. You can go full on bullet train with MTR. The track speed is determined by the connector you use, which require different materials, and each one is more expensive to make than the last. Okay, we're coming to the last station here. We're gonna have to get off here. I'm gonna get off. No, this isn't the last station, is it? Is there a next station? This station is Isotonics. We wanna get off at Isotonics. The sign automatically generates the line map from the platform. In MTR, you do not build trains, you build railways. I'm in creative mode, you'll notice. I've been in creative mode most of the time with this mod. It just makes more sense. I am not building Minecraft. I am building a model, I am building a railway, and it includes a lot of world sculpting. I am just starting to get the hang of using world edit, as is pretty, I think, fucking obvious by the ham-fisted uh, slabs of stone I've laid and the entrenchments and just general banging holes through the world in order to have a place to put my tracks. Yes, this world is ugly. This is my first successful MTR world. This is the first world in which... Oh, and the nitwit is not an actual danger there. The train will pass through him and not, and he will not notice it. These trains do not kill livestock or, or villagers who stray onto the tracks, which is a really nice thing. The trains are not built. 
they are their existence is simulated at each tick effectively they are continuously recreated along their route um, and just reinstantiated there they don't travel they continuously teleport it's sort of like a, the, the Peter Hamilton novel um, the station is Dover, the next station is Walrus. We are riding on and are going to just, I'm going to stand by the door, which is a favorite thing of mine on real subway trains and elevated trains. And you're not supposed to stand at the door, but you get such a good view. And I like being able to see out of the train, even if there's nothing to see but a wall and pipes and the occasional maintenance access. That that part's interesting to me too. I have yet to simulate actual subway tunnels in MTR. I have done some work with that in vanilla Minecraft with minecart railways and to a limited extent with Create Railway. Um, my last Create Railway world had some extensive tunneling, but I had not gone back and sculpted the tunnels yet. Um, I had intended to put uh, cage lamps and safety alcoves and work areas and so forth and run conduit, even if it was just decorative, you know. This, here we are, platform two going to West Burnside. Uh, we will be stopping at McLumney and then at West Burnside. McLumney is a short hop. There are some interesting sites along here, that wooden city we just passed. That's from repurposed structures. That's an end city redone in wood and plunked into a forest. Repurpose Structures is a mod I give a lot of credit to. I talk it up a lot. I think it's a terrific piece of work. It takes the vanilla structures and reskins them with vanilla materials and puts them in appropriate biomes. So you get a lot more stuff and uh, some really interesting stuff. Finding a sandstone monument in the middle of a desert is a really interesting... Oops! Hi there. A little sharp on that turn. I think I may need to um, clear some block back from the... We may be clipping. <coughs> I'm not really particularly concerned about clipping I was more concerned with getting this route up and running here we are at Burnside coming in the station is West Burnside and we will exit the train at West Burnside Watch the train pull away as it heads off toward the depot and its turnaround and starting the line over again. The devs on this mod have done some tremendous work on sound engineering. I mean, you hear the train hitting the train, uh, the track junctions we're gonna walk over here to Burnside proper hello bunny where we have a a yellow head for obvious reasons Hong Kong transit train that has just made its stop and is going to proceed off. It'll be coming back around. We're going to walk down here. I'm going to ride both the routes and then show you how it's done because it's 
kind of interesting. There's um running in creative mode with this mod seems very natural because of how the mod itself operates. There is a dashboard tool. This is how I control the entire railway from this handheld device. And I can control it from anywhere in the overworld. I have all my stations here. That, uh, and um, then I have routes. The stations are organized into routes. Routes are assigned to depots. Depots create trains and launch them onto the route. Whoops. Well, that was interesting. I really thought that train was going to was supposed to stop here. Let's have a look at the south route. Okay. South route, um I can tell it that it's a circular route and that it runs clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, I probably should, and I'm not completely sure whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. I have to stop and think about this for a second. To determine that, I'm going to switch uh, tools here in my hotbar. I'm carrying a few things in my hotbar. Let's talk about what I've got. This is a real node. To create rail, you place, you pl you place rail nodes. So you, you're continuously build, making crafting rail nodes. You're going to have to craft rail nodes. I only have one because I'm in creative. But if you're in survival, you're going to be crafting a lot of rail nodes. You only have to craft one of these rail connectors. They don't burn up when you use them. At least not that I've seen. Um, when in doubt, check the documentation. But you place real nodes and then you tap them with connectors to connect them and the type of connector determines the maximum speed that the train will attempt to hit, <clears throat> all the way up to 300 kph. There is a siding reel connector which uh, you use to build depots and a platform reel connector you use to make stations and that's pretty much it. That's the reel remover. Tap a reel node and pop goes the weasel. Um, platform block, when you place platform block along the edge of a platform rail, it creates a stop. The train, the, the train will, the, will open its doors if there is platform block. You know, the train will stop at the platform if it, if the route says to stop at the platform. The train will only open its doors if there is a pla an actual physical platform. You have to place platform block. This is Hong Kong style. There are a couple of styles of platform block, and we can go look at that here. This is the one I'm using. There's a cutaway one cut uh, that leaves a recess under the, under the uh, safety step little clearance. There's a North American style that's just the solid yellow, and if you've ever uh, traveled on the MTA in New York City, you know the big wide yellow stripe. Looks kind of like deck plate. It's textured. There's another North American platform uh, that's the black uh, platform that uh, does not have the yellow safety stripe. Generally, you want to put it back behind the yellow and then there's the UK, mind the gap. So, four kinds of platform block that you can use, and that makes the train open the doors, at least theoretically. Uh, assuming that it's set to stop there, let's look at, we are standing here. I'm standing right there where the blue dot is which puts me at Burnside Station, and specifically it puts me on Platform 2. The platforms are numbered. That allows me to organize them along the routes. We are on the south route, 
which is supposed to start at Burnside Station Platform 2. The train is supposed to stop at Burnside Station Platform 2 and then move on to Spieselbob, Jirachi, Melvin, Ticonderoga, and Vimvizhny, and then come back around on Platform 1, the, uh, coming back the, 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 the other direction. Uh, the, okay, we're too zoomed in here. Let me zoom out and switch to depots. There are two depots in our area, North Burnside and South Burnside. The South Burnside Depot is currently running, uh, running the West Route. Well, it says path not generated. Um, we haven't been in here and refreshed the path since the um, since I launched this world. So you know the the plant the mod is a little picky and would really like you to refresh your path when you first load. Anytime you make a change to the railway of any sort. You make a change to anything on a route, you must go to the depot and refresh the path. You can do it from anywhere. You don't have to be at the depot to bring up the, the depot in this, this tool. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Edit Instructions. Well, let's say, you know, at Edit Instructions, that's where we pick the route we're using. We're using the West route. And let us go refresh the path path created successfully that means that the railway is able to reach all the stations on the route there is a successful path from station to station all the way along that route it is a valid route we can choose how many vehicles per hour we are generating and we are, in fact, generating the trains. And I'm going to change the train that we're generating. We're currently using the CAF Airport Express, the, the blue train. With Let's change that. <clears throat> we got a lot of trains we could go with. I'm going to come all the way down here. We've got a great western railway have the GWR oh and look at all the uh, New York subway I can put an old R179 on here boy that's gonna give me flashbacks uh, let's go with the GWR I have a special feeling for the GWR oh look at that look at the dress on that train look at that green green and gold um, we don't have a, a, a sign here for some reason. Let's plop a sign here. And we are at Burnside Station, Platform 2. Make sure of which one we are. Get the brush. Right-click the sign. Choose Burnside Station, Platform 2. And now we have the route. And it shows us we are at that station, and these are active stations along the route. That train has gone off. To the turnaround and hopefully we'll be back to this station momentarily. The uh, siding rail generates the train. It spawns the train into the world. And the train then starts that continuous teleportation thing that creates the illusion of movement. There's our yellow head coming back into the depot. We will go ride that train in a minute. We may be riding that train now. Let's see. I think I may have just sent the GWR off on the what? Oh shoot, I sent it on the west route. Then we're on the south route. I completely forgot. I've been poking at the wrong bloody route. Um, let me go look at the correct at this route. 
Okay, it starts at Burnside as well and is going through, it should be going through the, yeah, the south route, do a refresh path. There, that may be our problem. Let's do the refresh path on the south route and see if our train stops and opens its door. Here's our train coming in. Did the refresh path. Let's see if we get doors opening here. Yes, we do. Boarding. We're going to ride the train here, and I'm going to actually stand here next to the seats because we got the big panoramic window. Again, the sound. Um, yes, it's bloody loud aboard these trains. If, you, if you've never actually ridden one of these trains, they are thumping loud. There is a reason why on TV and in movies, when you see, some, uh, see a scene aboard a subway train, everybody's wearing earbuds or headphones. And now you know why. Oh, I need to deal with that. I know I'm flipping through some blocks there. This route is the first one I built in this round. Uh, in this, uh... This is the first round I built in this game world, and the deceleration zones are way too short. Like, intensely too short. I'm going to move back a little bit to this window and see if it's... Oops, sugar. I just dismounted. I just walked out. The, I managed to clip out the door while it was still closing. I stepped through the doorway while it was still closing. Dag nabbit. All right, well, we'll take a few minutes to look around here, and I don't have a um, sign. I don't have signage down here. I'm going to put up signage. And we are at Spiesel Bob and at Platform 2. So we take our brush and right click the sign and tell it that we uh, want platform two. It get had the route, uh, the end of the route is Burnside Station. And so, yeah, there we go. And it shows us that, yeah, we're at the second one. That one is grayed out. That's behind us. The ones that are active are still you know, lit up there and there it all is. Oh, and yeah, we are seeing um, location markers in my heads up map. Let me um, ba -ba 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 -ba, overlay settings. Um, I don't remember where it is. Oh, we're waiting for the train. Uh, remember where this is waypoint settings uh in game waypoints off there we go that turns those off there we are now you don't see those in the heads up display i've had some complaints that those are distracting i just tune them out Like Jordy LaForge, my, my ADHD is uh, able to accommodate a lot of visual noise and just tune out the stuff that I'm not interested in. It just, I don't even really perceive it. It's, it's, it's there and I'm seeing it. It just doesn't register. Okay, and we're going to put a sign here. It's, oh, good gosh, it's six minutes until we get the next one here. All right, um, we're going to restart this. We're going to go teleport off to Burnside. Eee, falling through the world is so much fun.
Okay, and run up to the head of Burnside here, and I'm going to change that yellow head train. Flip over to Depot, and I believe North Burnside. North Burnside is running which route? The south route, the one that we want. North Burnside is the correct one to do. We're going to go into North Burnside, and we're going to change the train. And we're going to make it the Tung Chung Line. An electric multiple unit operates on the MTR Rapid Transit Railway System in Hong Kong, jointly built by a consortium consisting of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries of Japan and Hyundai Rotem of South Korea, and come in two variants. TKE C651 was delivered for the Tsung Kwan O line used on the Kwantong line until 2009. And TKE 6C6522 04E delivered in 2006 to 2007 for, and uh, it doesn't look like I can scroll, the text goes off, and I don't see how to, oh well, what a pity, what a pity, my heat is running really high, streaming and running this is, Thumping my laptop pretty hard. This is running it all on a Lenovo IdeaPad. Um, I don't have a commercial relationship with Lenovo, but I have used their equipment for many, many years since uh, they bought uh, ThinkPad from IBM. I used to use IBM ThinkPads. All right, we have chosen our train. Oh, we did not click the plus sign. Shame on me. I want to go to back to the K train. Chain. There we go. There's our K train. Okay, that restarts the line and sends off a train to the turnaround. We will ride this one and not go buggering about while we're in station and end up clipping out of the train and getting left behind. I really want to ride this route. <clears throat> Those of you who may have tuned in for Create Trains, and I've only got one viewer right now, so if you're watching this, you're watching it on a VOD, um, you should know that I will get to Create Trains before this stream is out. We're only a half an hour into what is a scheduled for a two-hour stream. So we'll see how things go here. Here comes our train. A very different sound. No bugger. And we board in time to get away from the merchant. I don't know if the merchant would have followed us aboard the train. The merchant just clipped through the train. You see that? Just walked right through it as if it wasn't even there. I'm willing to bet the merchant didn't uh, have the ability to perceive the train. This is a very different sort of train. This is uh, has has no for, no lateral seating. It's all aligned along the body of the train. Mostly standing room. Oh, that's clipping. This was the first line I built in this world, and I'm still getting used to world edit bolts. The fact that I have a functional train that I am able to ride is quite a thing, is quite an achievement. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, different sounds for the doors. I'm thinking they may have actually gone out and recorded the actual trains. Would not surprise me if they've got, if this mod was developed with actual recordings. I need to do more research into it. MTR is 
developed by serious real fans. The components that come with it are designed for building replicas of actual rail stations. Not for it, 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 it's it's not it, it's meant for serious uh, model railroading doing urban transit in Minecraft. Um, there's a whole ticketing and fare and zone system. You know, you can set up a paid subway with zone fares and ticket offices and the whole bit. I have yet to build my first escalator. I'm going to put in an escalator at one of these stops somewhere along the way in the, uh, between this week and next week. So yeah, um, if you're not digging this railway, sorry, uh, but I am going to be working with this mod for a while. Um, I'm going to try and get better at it. Among other things, I'm going to need to learn how to do... Let me scoot my view a little so that it's a little more clear. Our subtitles there for the... You know, we just passed Melvin and are on our way to Ticonderoga. For their Vimvisioni and the turnaround. We're going to stay on the train during the turnaround. But you can see how awkward and ugly it is. I do not know how to use turnaround track yet. I just built a thumping great loop. The fact that I am able to cross the overworld at this speed impresses the hell out of me. I mean, we're seriously rocking across the overworld, going great vast distances here in short, short times. If you had a server with a lot of people on it, with a lot of players on it, This would be a heck of a mod to have, but you'd have to build your world, so much of your world ahead of time. Look at that, we're moving so fast, the, ch the, the train loader is having trouble keeping up. If I don't quit this, I'm gonna overload my laptop. I, my heat is going crazy. We're getting off here. getting off the train here and we're gonna sit here and hope that my laptop does not overheat um, matter of fact we're gonna pause the game for a second and give my laptop just a minute here let me flip over to okay we're gonna go to the break screen for a second while my laptop heat comes down and hope that I don't lose the stream. Whoo, that trip peaked my heat. My tachometer took a leap upward. So we are going to sit here quietly for a moment and, and wait for, the, for my poor processor to recover and for the heat to come back down. Holy cats. Remember what I was saying about a server with a lot of players? Obviously, it is a big thumping server with a tremendous amount of horsepower. It's going to be a very expensive server to uh, to retain to maintain. Um, MTR would do wonders for moving lots of players without teleportation. You'd be able to move a lot of people across the overworld, great distances, 
in a short amount of time. But the resource intensiveness is just phenomenal. My gosh, I have a tachometer in my um, sidebar here in my system bar. I'm running uh, XFCE for my desktop. If you're not Linux, um, Linux has a lot of desktops, uh, a lot of envir uh, desktop environments that you can run. I happen to be running XFCE. I'm very fond of it. It, uh, among other things, allows me to put graphic displays of my system sensors in my system bar, which goes up the left side of the screen. I am riffing for time, yes. Uh, my tachometer, I have right at the top, right underneath the big power button that the system would like you to keep there, and it's really convenient. And then the clock, I have a tachometer that shows my system heat because I do stuff that drives it up. Right now, it looks like I'm running about 51C. Little warm, little warm. I'm going to give it just another minute here. Boy, that was a, that, that felt like a painfully close one here. Um, we're going to take just a second here and optimize my cooling for, for a second here. See if we can bring this down. Okay. Wow. I don't remember having to pause a stream to avoid overheating my system before. I wonder if there's some sort of streamer achievement for uh, dropping the stream because you overheated your box. I'd be willing to bet. There we go. We're coming back down into the safe zone. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to game screen and go. There we go. Okay. We're just going to say bye-bye to Train right now and watch Train go around the loop because we don't need to be hammering the terrain loader so much. Um, oof. The stations all look pretty much the same. Uh, they, the brick is colored. Um, this is Minecraft Transit Railway Stone Brick. You see in the, um, what am I looking at? Uh, I think I'm using Jade, actually, in this particular mod pack. But you see that in the little representative stone blo brick block up there, it is purple and glowing like it's magic. Um, this is stone brick from the MTR mod that picks up the color that is assigned to the station. Remember when we go to here, and I'm going to let the train go by and just watch it go. As much as I would really like to ride that train back to Burnside. I came perilously close to, to dropping the stream there, and I don't want to risk that again. So... Yeah, we see that the station itself is that color in the map. Um, when you, you... You can pick the color of the station, and it, there's a whole color picker here. We I think we saw that earlier. You can set the fare zone if you want to set zones for your fares and do the whole thing. There are the whole thing for station exits and... Yeah, adding a station exit uh, for automated routing and 
passenger routing and this and that and the other it's I've barely scratched the surface of this of this mod. I have managed to get a railway network set up across a really vast swath of overworld. I mean, you look at the scope of this thing. This is a mod designed for covering large distances. These are big trains. They're 80 to 100 blocks long. My platforms are by default 80 blocks long to accommodate these trains. Now, I could make little bitty short ones. I could make a one-car train, but that's going to look weird. I mean, please, nobody runs over on one-car train. Um, shortest I've ever seen in Chicago is two cars, and that was at 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. The red line gets down to once every 20 minutes at 3 a.m. on Sunday mornings and is running a two-car train. Ask me how I know this. Um, the, uh, it's because I live there. The, um... It look, you know, I mean, you can see the vast distances. These are entire biomes that we are rocketing across. And that this map covers. This is a big chunk of overworld. Thousands of blocks. And you can see the numbers spinning up at the top of the screen there. We're going, well, we're going 3,000 blocks out here to get to this turnaround. And that's just going on for the west line. Yes, I overshot a couple of times. I'm still learning to use World Edit. Um, I'm going to drop out of that and teleport back off to Burnside, falling through the world. Yay, pop, zoom. There is our trader standing in between the tracks. And if a train comes by, I am willing to bet he will utterly ignore it. I don't believe that uh, the, the trader is going to be able to, to perceive it. But yeah, it all runs from the handheld. You lay your track, put stations on the tracks, organize the stations into routes, assign the routes to depots, tell the depot how often to generate a train and what train to generate. Bugger off. Tell the uh, depot what kind of train to generate and how often. And there's another trader out here. Bloody hell. Hopefully I'm out of his range. Um, and then the railway simply, the, the trains just start running. Once you tell the de uh, depot, whoops. Once you tell the depot, um, refresh path and go, it it's just starts spawning trains. And there are so many different kinds of trains to spawn. Uh, we've already seen a uh, several of them. We'll look at more later. We're going to bounce out of this uh, for, for a minute here. I'm going to put us over to the BRB screen. And do a save and quit. I'm changing out game worlds here. We're going to go over to create trains. This is a new create trains world. I got disgusted with diesel generators. After last week's stream i went back and played with the sound on for a while i've been playing with the sound off for various reasons and went back and played with the sound on and went around to the stations and the thumpa thumpa was just intolerable it was just the muffler did not make any difference at all that i could really tell at this point i think i was kidding myself that it was making a difference and so I copied 
my mod pack over to a new instance, deleted diesel generators, and started looking for what sort of power source I could replace it with. I wanted an energy mod of some sort. And what I found was create new age. Now create new age is an electricity mod. It uh, you build generators, and these are not little thumpa thumpa diesel generators. These are big thumping rotating magnets driven by mechanical energy, the way create was meant to do. You turn mechanical energy into electricity well let me quit talking about it and go look at it new game world brand new game world as of this past sunday i have been working on this for about a week now one of the first things i did was uh, locate the woodland mansion and move into it uh, i am running in a peaceful mo mode here so up front uh, this is Minecraft 1.20.1. I am running Create with Create Trains, Create New Age, a uh, bunch of other Create stuff, Create Deco, Create Steam and Rails. And have spent the better part of a week working on exploring this stuff and dressing the place up a bit bit so we have proper lighting we don't have torches we have cage lamps there and we have rose quartz lamps throughout the mansion uh this is an acacia mansion yes this is oh we're gonna hold on and looking out the window there uh, there's a lovely great surprise out the window and i really want to show that off and it's they, i don't have the lighting set for it yet we'll, we'll get back to it Get back. We're going to look around inside first. There is a lot to see. This is an Acacia mansion. This is part of repurposed structures again. It uh, repurposed structures, redid the woodland mansion in a different uh, wood scheme. Acacia with dark oak trim instead of uh, oak with spruce. And orange and white carpet. I went through and put in uh, the, the lamps. It is going to get noisy in here. This is Create. Create has a lot of mechanical sounds. Um, here we have bronze being made, uh, excuse me, brass being made. Nothing in it right now. Uh, but yeah, the, the trusty heated basin with the mixer, the, the machine that goes bonk. Uh, that makes all the, the metal sheet. I have try, uh, I have done some stuff in creative mode in this world. I make no apologies for it. I'm here to do model railroading, not to do scratch vanilla building. If you want to see some sort of hardcore skyblock stuff, go somewhere else. I don't do that. Um, I'm here to do model railroading. At... That said, I try to work from raw materials and do all the crafting uh, legitimately where, whenever possible, where, whenever it's not going to take me, you know, three days worth of grinding to get to, a th to, get to the next stage in the tech tree. So, four auto smelters set up, uh, one with brick right now, this one's stone, I've been making a lot of thumping stone. Uh, I've generated an awful lot of cobble uh, with some of the stuff I've been doing. One here that has done that originally was built to convert sand into glass. This one is metals and is still doing metals. Um, you may notice I have a, sw a lever on one of the barrels so that I can uh, shut down one of the sides of it if uh, things run sparse. Right now, things are indeed about to run sparse. I'm finishing out. Uh, well, this is burning. This is just burning out. Let me just go on and shut that off. There we go. 
That is a Tom Simple storage hopper with a, uh, that connects by cable. That block there is not actually a Casey of planks. That is cable that has been painted to look like a Casey of planks. That hopper pull, it has a filter on it that uh, pulls raw iron out of the inventory system and dumps it into this chest in order to be auto smelted. We're going to be looking at how that gets its supply in just a minute. Let's walk around and look at some of the other things going on here because we need to know about a few other things. First off is the elevator because I have built an elevator in the, in the mansion. There is no safety door here yet. Um, I've yet to figure out how to bring the redstone around to the call button and bring redstone around for the uh, safety door and get it on the levels. And it, 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 I'm still fiddling. I'm not good with redstone. I'm not highly skilled with redstone. I mean, it's going to take some time. Let's hit the call button. I'm going to bring the elevator down. I'm not going to ride it just yet. I am very proud of this elevator. It is all done in copper. Look at that. It is a whole copper cage. Yes, that is a train going by. We're about to go see it. That is Cargo 1. First, we're going to run back here and look at the storage system. I use Tom's Simple Storage. Which means I have something really kind of large and messy here. Um, this is the core of it. This is the inventory connector. There's over 7,000 inventory slots available. Each slot is a slot in a chest. Can hold up to will hold one stack of a stackable item or one of a unique item. Crafting terminal stuck to it gives me access to everything in the inventory with the crafting table. We've seen this before. I'm carrying an advanced wireless terminal link to it, so I have access to all of this by remote. And I have a beacon set up next door in the room next door. And yes, I punched a hole all the way up through the mansion because it had to go within eight blocks of uh, the crafting terminal. Yes, you are in fact hearing a boiler and a steam engine cranking away. We'll go look at that in a few minutes. So now that we've seen the um, I got hover mode on, let's um, I need to trade out my jet pack. This one's getting low on fuel. Let's go on and ride the elevator up and back down. Turn off the jetpack. Yeah, I walked onto the catwalk and it's like, wait a minute, something's wrong with the floor here. Alright, so we're on the ground floor. We'll go up to two. Yes, European numbering system. Because there's something really neat up here. There's an electric motor. That is a that is a create new age mod. That is an actual create mod. It's part of the create suite. That is an electric motor driving the elevator pulley. Connector wire going well. Sadly, out the wall. I, there is no way to put a painted block in the hole. Uh, there has to be a uh, connector there. But yeah, there's that. Let's go outside. Ride back down to the ground floor. We'll. There is some stuff going on on the second floor. Uh, and we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, but it's earlier uh, stuff. Hmm. Let's look at it now. Because it is earlier stuff. We'll go back up to the first floor. Looking out the window, we can see the lights over the train station. This is the first generator I built in the uh, Create New Age um, mod. 
This takes creates industrial revolution from mechanical uh, power and steam and introduces electricity, but it is Victorian electricity. It uses a thumping huge generator, as you can see. This is not something that can be easily placed like a little diesel and with, a, with a gas tank. It has to have mechanical power. There's a, uh, an enclosed shaft there that runs up to a rooftop windmill that's driving this. It took me a while to find enough magnetite. I actually went out and mined the magnetite. Um, finding the magnetite and mining enough of it to build this thing took a while. But now I have 16 MFE of electricity stored in an accumulator that I can then use to run motors and electric lights and all sorts of fun, fun things, like elevators. You'll notice this accumulator doesn't go anywhere uh, other than this energizer. The energizer is used to create some of the uh, high-tier materials for the New Age tech tree. You have to charge stuff up. So that one I used to create the materials, to create the, uh, to, to craft the energized materials that allowed me to then build the big one, which we will see in a little bit. First, though, we're going to change the time. Because this is much more dramatic if seen at night. Remember that elevator we just rode? Well, just outside here, and let me find out what's happened to my console. There we go. Demon Goat, hey, how you doing? I'm sorry I missed seeing you logging in. Uh, you have arrived just in time to see the cool thing that I have was really wanting to, 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 to demonstrate this particular stream. Uh, we just rode the elevator, an electrically powered elevator, in a woodland mansion, which is pretty cool. But outside, I have an elevator that goes that is electrically powered and goes all the way up to a sky island. I had to build a pier because the woodland mansion I moved into fronted directly onto water. There was originally just a drop off here straight to the water. I had to build a pier to, so that it at least looked decent. There was somewhere to go. We will go up that path to the train in a few minutes. We're gonna go look at this first. And we walk out along the pier and then we go up and across the bridge and look at that. All this lovely brass trim. Sky Island. Glowberries hanging underneath. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful to have. Isn't that just gorgeous to have right outside? Oh, and looking back at the mansion, we can see rooftop windmills going. I use uh, turbine-style windmills instead of the more classic forearm design because they're more compact. Um, they work just as well, and they take up a lot less space, and they're way easier to build. Beacon going up that keeps my uh, wireless terminal working. And over there is the steam engine thumping away that we heard through the wall earlier. And that l bright gold line is the electrical wiring coming around that eventually comes up here and goes up and up and up. Nixie Tube telling us that the elevator's at the top right now. We'll hit the call button. It will take a minute. Let us walk back here. Where we can see up there. And it's going to take a minute. I have 
a reinforced motor on this with plenty of power supply, uh, this elevator car is moving at the maximum speed that the create mod will allow an elevator to move. The only way I, you know, I don't think I can get, could get it to go faster by putting a creative motor on it running at 256 RPM. I'm, I'm running a reinforced motor on it already, which is, I think, about equal. There's the car. You, can you see it? It's still way up there. It's moving faster than it looks. We'll take a minute to get down here. That's a very far distance. We are right now at an elevation of 66. We are three blocks above the water level. We are three blocks above sea level here. You see there's the electrical connector and the gold wire. That gold wire had to be overcharged in an energizer. And here's the elevator coming down. Wooden floor and t ceiling, brass, con uh, brass and casing construction. And here we are. Our elevator has arrived. It's a very small elevator. I have yet to figure out how to put the contacts under the floor. There is obviously a trick to that. Well, again, it's a redstone circuitry issue. I could put them under the floor, but then trying to run the redstone for the call button and for any special effects on arrival, like having a uh, second door outside for safety, <clears throat> uh, gets more complicated. But it would be lovely to have this bloody great redstone contact block hidden under the floor and not right there intruding into the passenger cabin we are at the ocean platform let's go to the floating island and just look out the window as as we go up look because the brass windows don't give a wonderful view here the the, the casing gets in the way here i've thought about rebuilding this and making it a glass elevator just for the scenic view Various things that we will go look at. That is, in fact, you know, that is fluctuated magnetite, which required um, ancient debris and overcharged diamonds. It's extremely resource intensive, like massively expensive to make. But it gives you a magnetic flux of 24, which maxes out uh, and gives you a lot of power. That generator is what is driving us up and up and up through the island itself. This is not a hollow island. This is a summer island, and it is not a hollow one which is kind of sad because I could have set another floor for the interior of the island. If it had been a win one of the winter islands, yeah, bringing this up into an ice cave would have been cool. And here we are on the Sky Island where we can look down and see the mansion in all its glory and all those windmills powering so much equipment and the rail loop and so forth. It's a spectacular view from up here. I need to quit twitching my mouse and let people have a have a look. And then we come up here. And there's the wiring that's coming up from below to a reinforced motor. It's using 240 per tick. It's a fairly uh, strong amount of electricity. 
it is cranking along absolutely as hard as it possibly can. And it still took us that long to get up here. Oh, there's a cloud coming by. We are actually at the cloud layer. Which makes this place really interesting to work with. Let's increase our visibility. The view for the ride up was very dramatic at night, but um, I'd like to be able to see. Right over here, I intend to build a monorail station and extend a monorail to this sky island. Across this gap, I wanted to put a monorail literally through the clouds. Let's just bounce down to the front porch here real quick with the map um, and get back uh, to our tour here because we have still so much to see. There's our Sky Island and the elevator in place. I'm very pleased with, this, with that. Off this way, we have our train station. Now, the train station at the mansion right now is just Iron Catwalk. You'll just have to get used to that. There's a lot going on here. We have some cargo unloading going on here. We have a Shea in, uh, engine. Um, I've used it for a shunting engine previously and in the other world. Oh, I did add semaphores to the signals so we can see that this signal right now is clear. Arm is up, light is green. Our blaze burner driver here um yes i could have left the cushion in and put a cat on the cushion but getting i would have had to go find a cat or summon a cat and i didn't want to fiddle with a cat it was easier to thump in a blaze burner and uh yeah it's it's got a schedule it's going to be waiting 10 minutes here we're going to bamf out in a minute and give it something to pick up there was something there. Before it goes out again, I don't know how long it is. Why don't we go on and bamf out to the iron extractor. Okay, so. Here we have the extractor. Turbine windmill running it. And it's all running underwater. Make sure I've got my gear on. The Create mod has no problem at all running underwater. That is a drilling machine. It requires a 5x5 five five mechanical crafting array and a lot of specialty parts. You then have to go prospecting with a, an Oravane finder, a sort of dowsing rod, that will tell you when you have found something. I found raw iron. When it says found nearby, that means it's time to be thumping down a... Oops. Come up for some air here. That means it's time to thump down a drilling machine, power it up, and get it moving. There's a diamond drill, uh, excuse me, th this one has a netherite drill bit. Uh, you've got the regular drill bit, the diamond drill bit, and the netherite drill bit. And then a uh, matter of how much rotational energy you can supply. The greater the speed, of course, the more often it'll produce ore. Every so many ticks, this produces a raw iron. And it does so continuously it is uh, I found a vein of iron and I am harvesting it we have 304 iron in here that is built up let's start it going up to the loader the chunk loader is necessary so that uh, the iron will transfer um, the train will pick up from a lo from the loader with the chunk unloaded but the, the conveyor belt will not take iron from the vault up to the loader. Yes, I'd normally let it accumulate in the vault and only send it up to the loader when it's built up a ways. 
reason for this being um, the auto smelting that we saw earlier in the VOD, earlier in the stream. Uh, it's using coal block as its fuel and it is inefficient to run small batches of metal through it. So I'm leaving the iron to build up until there's enough of it to be worth picking up. And right now, oops, turn the jetpack on. There we go. Right now, we've got all this iron rolling out of the vault and zooming up here and into this chest, which now has a, about a stack and a half. And there is a portable storage in face fed by a chute from the chest. The chute was critical. That was the absolute critical piece. It pulls the iron from the chest and feeds it to the portable storage interface. And without the chute, it didn't work. By the way, I am using an in-game jetpack powered by compressed air. We've seen that before. And so we have iron thumping along here. Let's just see how we're doing here. We are up to 100, 143 iron up there in the loader. Now, I could probably put, um, I, I could put a, a boiler out here and steam engines and drive the drill a lot harder, put a lot more rotation uh, on it, a lot of more RPMs on it than a windmill can supply. Even, you, know, even with, you can only gear up a windmill so much before it overstresses. But slow and steady is how Create works. Create is all about being patient and slowly churning out massive quantities of stuff. This is Victorian industrial processing modeled very well. Everything runs on mechanical energy. There, uh, you're, uh, I've built factories in Create before and used Victorian design with a main shaft running down the top center of the room that everything takes off from. It works spectacularly well. I'm also Riffing for time, waiting for the train to show up. It's on a very slow schedule. I may want to bamf back to... Let's go to the front porch, since I don't have a... Um... Let's see, let's see if the train is still here. The train is still sitting here. I want this train to get moving. Give me your schedule. It's set to uh, wait 10 minutes here. I'm going to roll that down to one in order to get it moving here. It waits 20 seconds at the iron station to make sure that all the iron in the loader is transferred over. Oh, by the way, with the chunk loader, the loader is continuing to get iron while I'm not there. There we go. Train is now following this schedule. And we'll give it that minute and just watch for it to go while I go swap out my jetpack over here. Got a couple of things going on over here, but we've seen this kind of stuff before. Oh, come on. Where did it go? Dang it. There it is. Okay. Trade out the jetpack for a full one. Put the knackered one on there. Yeah, we've seen this sort of thing before. We've got a windmill going. It's driving the crusher wheels. It's driving um, a uh, heated compactor here for making industrial iron. 
and uh, and then we've got the stomp the, the the lava system over here oh there goes the train i'm gonna pop to the iron extractor i want to see this happen all right we see there's 315 iron up in the loader Right now, the loader belt is still running. I need to go shut it off. There we go. The jetpack is occasionally a little unwieldy. Okay, here comes the train, and we will see this happen in real time here. Train pulls up, blows the whistle because it's making a stop, and the connector latches on and we have real-time transfer boom 200 iron that quick zoom the loader has dumped 300 iron into that hopper car there's a storage vault hidden inside the hopper car and interfaces at the top and bottom and now we're going to go back to the front porch i really need to set a teleport point at the train station Although, <clears throat> let's turn that off a minute. It's becoming a nuisance. I don't need the airborne maneuverability signal here at the beginning of the station to keep uh, another train from entering. Not that that's a problem. There's only one train on the station. Only one train on this loop right now. Uh, I need to give a shout-out to a Minecraft designer who has produced some really amazing stuff that I am using here. Let me just bounce over and HB Stratos HB Stratos has not posted anything on uh, createmod.com in a couple of years, and it makes me sad because they're a brilliant designer. Um, the hopper car we just saw is their design. The unloader here is their design. And design uh, it's, it's built to go with the hopper car which is coming in and watch this unloaders there watch as they pulls in boom iron just tumbles right out onto the conveyor belts we got five stacks of iron drifting up here now it's going to go into this storage vault but the storage vault has a one at a time feeder uh, coming out of it and going underground which is kind of interesting all that iron comes up here and boom 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 feeds into there and starts feeding out one iron at a time onto this conveyor belt where does that conveyor belt go you ask well glad you did because that conveyor belt goes around to here. Goes underground and comes out here. And if we wait a minute, we will see iron start to emerge. It does take a minute. It's a slow conveyor belt. Um, and it... Uh, runs quite a distance. Now, conveyor belts only have a maximum length of 20, and you will, of course, see linkers here and there along the way. There's our iron. So all this iron travels down this way. And while we're waiting for it to arrive at the chute, let me talk a little more about HB Stratos. Because HB Stra oops, didn't mean to do that. HB Stratos cre uh, designed the unloader that you just saw. Uh, I used a schematic and dropped that in as a unit. 
This is model railroading. Yes, I went to the hobby shop and I bought a thing and dropped it into my layout rather than building it from scratch. I've said before on this stream and in previous streams, I'm here to do model railroading, not to do scratch builds. Um, if I use schematic stuff and it annoys you, uh, there are hardcore skyblock streams out there that may be more to your interest. We have, um, when the iron hits the chute, it drops into a chest. Under that chest, you can just barely see it. There is a Tom's Inventory Hopper. Now you won't see the raw iron dropping into here because it's not staying long enough to register. We know where it's going. We saw it earlier in the stream. Where it's going... ...is this output hopper. And here is iron ticking into the furnace from that conveyor belt. So, using the create or extraction mod, I have effectively a continuous, automatically delivered supply of iron. Dug up by Create Machinery, Windmill Powered, brought to me by a Create Train, automatically unloaded and conveyed. Yeah, our train's going to be running every minute right now. I need to readjust the schedule to get back to 10 minutes. Boop. Let's readjust this so that it is running every 10 minutes. There's no sense in it running uh, more often. And give the schedule back to the driver. There we go. <clears throat> We've seen this. Let's go look at this windmill over here because it's got sea lanterns. It's got sea lanterns because that marked where I found a vein of lapis lazuli. This is only the second vein of material I found. The ore excavation mod, mod does not put a lot of veins of ore in the world. You have to hunt for them, and they are widely spaced. And, um, yeah, I have found a coal vein, but I've yet to build a railway all the way out to it to be able to pick up the coal. 700 and 1772 lapis lazuli three lapis lazuli in that storage vault ticking along there's our drilling machine drilling fluid is not required for bringing up uh, lapis lazuli we are using a diamond drill there we go ticks up again we are using a diamond drill on this one. Um, I, I put up the sea lanterns so that I could find the uh, thing again. I did also later put a teleport marker on it. Silly me. This is shut off right now. Let's turn on the extractor. Boom. Lapis lazuli. Where's it going? Oh, we know where it's going. It's going underground. And it's going off... ...through here. Oh, there's one. Must have been one left on the uh, conveyor belt from an earlier run. It's going underground. It's going through a very tight little underground passage here. We'll give it a minute. We're still seeing uh, the one-offs. Haven't got the stream going yet. Curious as to why not. Well, it is a very long distance. 
Let's try to be a little more patient with the create mod here, shall we? There it is. There we go. There we are. Now we have a steady stream of lapis feeding here. Which will be merged in with the iron. Somewhere underneath the train, though the conveyor belts meet, there is a chute involved in order to drop the lapis onto the belt with the iron and intersperse it. And once the steady stream arrives, we will see it alternating iron lapis, iron lapis. Give it just a minute. There we go. And there are raw materials arriving by conveyor belt and feeding a stream of materials into my storage system. Which if we scroll to boop, boop, lapis, there's only nine lapis in there right now. Let's um, jump down here. It's about to be ten. And we'll just watch this for a moment because there's some motion here to watch. We've already seen iron ticking away into the, uh, there's our lapis, there's now 11. And there it is, just quietly ticking up. 15, 16, 17. And at some point, that would, there will be over 1,700 lapis in the storage. It just, we just had to be patient. Patience is a real key to create. It took a lot of patience to build this thumper, let me tell you. Big boiler, yes. Big boiler with five steam engines and cranking out uh, with the shafts conjoined to uh, collect all that torque into one output. I am putting out 81,920 stress units of torque. Um, I am... I only have 19,968 available. This generator is eating most of it. It's eating a massive amount of, of stress. But it's running at 92.3% efficiency because, because I have netherite magnets. The netherite magnet, you see it looks kind of like diamond block with netherite casing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's uh, largely consists of ancient debris and uh, overcharged diamonds, really expensive materials. But, yeah, I dug down in order to extend that accumulator. This accumulator has 32 MFE uh, stored up in it. I have diamond cable connecting a reinforced energizer that stores 1 million FE in its internal reservoir, which is a good thing because it takes a fucking huge amount of FE to energize a stack of diamond, and it took multiple stacks of diamonds to make this, which I had to do on the old energizer, uh, which was... Uh, which initially i rebuilt this this uh, a couple of times i initially built it with 
fluctuated magnetite, which only has a magnetic force of 8, which is still a massive improvement. I was able to make the fluctuated magnetite without too much hassle with the base generator. You know, it, 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 you build your own ladder, as with a lot of uh, Minecraft tech mods. I built the base level uh, magnetite uh, generator. That allowed me to build this one with fluctuated magnetite which produced enough power that I could then make the diamonds to then tear down, then shut this down and refit it with netherite magnets. At which point, <clears throat> it's also charging this accumulator, which has the gold wiring that feeds up there and goes off around the edge of the house. Doing the wiring is kind of fun. And that powers the elevator that we took from inside the house, which is currently down on the ground floor on the ground floor, and so we can see the elevator belt there. I really need to build a safety cage around that. I need to figure out how to do the redstone though. This windmill uh, originally powered the um first generator and then I realized I'd built it in too tight an area in the wrong area and had to move it. Uh, there was going to be problems with it where it was. This is the original windmill that uh, powers the level one equipment. So at the beginning of the stream that gold wiring also goes off around the foundation of the mansion and along the pier and along the bridge and up the brass scaffolding to power the uh, the elevator at the island. There goes our train. Off. Well, it's not going to collect anything because the loader is off. You know, that's that's a shame. But there's no sense in leaving the loader on when they're uh, right now uh, all the time. You know, it's it's like I explained, it's it's just not efficient. Turn the jet engine off a second. We're going back inside. I've done some sculpting on the area. I put in the tree and the the weed around it to to kind of help uh, with the, the unrelieved sameness of the polished cut granite. I need to come back with the trowel tool or something and vary the blocks. Get more texturing in. Um, the factory is going to be a factory. There's no getting around that. This is... is actually rather uh, typical of the early ind industrial revolution so much of the machinery development uh, so much of the technological development was done by rich guys who had a property they could use to build the stuff in and could afford the materials and the tools and the time involved what you have seen on this stream has taken me a week to build. I play a lot of Minecraft, and it's still taken me a week to get all this in. I have used some sculpting tools, as no, as you may have noticed. The Batania mod is present in this mod pack. There's one of the mystic flowers over there. Um... There is a, well, I don't have it in my inventory right now. It'll be up here. Oh, excuse me. Insufficient caffeination. Need, 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 need more caffeine. There we go. Rod of the Shifting Crust currently set to polished cut granite. The Rod of the Shifting Crust can be set to a material, and if you have that material in your inventory, if you click a block in the world, it replaces that block with the block from your inventory. 
You can also right-click and replace a whole grid of blocks at one shot, which is how I laid all this smooth stone. I didn't lay this by hand. Are you kidding? I used a world sculpting tool. I used a rod of the shifting crust and did it in like, I don't know, 12 by 12 patches at a time. It's coming along. It's coming along. We've, we've, I've got, I have for the first time in a single player world, a reason to build a cargo transport railway. The, my, the create or excavation mod has given me that reason. Here's the mansion. Here's the lapis lazuli vein. There's the iron vein. There's no veins of ore anywhere in this area. I've prospected through it. If we look up here, here is a coal deposit. There is a redstone vein. And way the heck up there is a zinc deposit. I've yet to build railways. I mean, you can see, I've built a lot of rail. Oh, yeah, that's a uh, an airship. We can go look at that some other time. That is from the Immersive Structures mod, which is another favorite of mine. That is a fortress. It is a nether fortress redone in stone brick and cracked stone brick and embedded into the landscape as, a ruin, as an ancient ruin. I'm planning on building an archaeological camp there with a, with a station. <clears throat> um, the airship is going to have a dock built. I'm planning on uh, actually putting a building a docking cradle and a uh, and putting an ele uh, putting a like both a cargo lift and a passenger lift up to it. So there will be a platform there with elevators and the whole bit. Eventually, there will be a line out to the coal deposit and the redstone vein and the zinc deposit. Putting rail through the Badlands is going to be all sorts of exciting. And, and oh, that's eroded Badlands. Oh, yippee skippy. Fun, fun terrain to try and work through. Okay, and that is, however... About the extent of it, I can't ride this train. It's a one-seater model, and I replaced the seat with a blaze burner to automate it. And we have seen, pretty much, I think, everything there is to see. I normally close out somewhere between quarter till and ten o'clock. This is a new stream. I'm still getting used to it. Let's go take one more look at the copper elevator because I am just so pleased with myself over this copper elevator and getting it built and getting it working and making sure it was all glued together correctly because you notice the copper catwalk is flush with the floor. Yeah, you know, it, it had to be uh, super glued down uh, from down below the floor below floor level to get it to work and then I had to add the copper block up on top so that the elevator pulley didn't glue into the structure. And again, I really want to get this damn uh, contact put underneath the floor. I'd like to put the controls down on the floor, not up on top of it, and still have, and, you know, have more room in the passenger car. And by the way, did you notice the, f the door? It doesn't slide. It folds. The copper door, instead of sliding, folds out of the way. And I think that is just a, an, a, such an amazingly cool touch on the part of the dev mods, that, uh, the, the mod devs, the DDD, mod devs, that, that they put that effort into it, into giving it a slightly different sound, I think, but, but giving it that bifold door, animating the bifold door, 
that took a little doing, and it's, it's really cool that they went to that level of, of detail for a deco mod. We have seen, oh, not quite. There is one last thing to see. There is one last thing to see. Let's go up to the first floor, to the higher torque machinery room. I have one more thing. There is a room up here with some higher torque machinery. The sawmill, where I where I process uh, stone into stone brick and smooth stone into smooth stone slab and strip logs to make casing and so forth. They Freehand deployer, which is needed for making precision mechanisms and various other things. Currently not doing anything. And the rail making machine. This machine makes train track. There are two deployers and a stomper, and they create train track. And what they have created is monorail track. Takes, it takes a specific track for monorail, yes. You can't use the regular train track. You have to make monorail track. And I have enough monorail track made. Now, the neat thing being, one metal girder and one metal bracket and one iron sheet makes eight monorail tracks. So, this explodes out like, you know, making ingot from uh, iron block. It, it makes a lot of track for each set of ingredients put in. Don't be quite so impressed by the numbers as far as materials contrib contribution. But that is a thumping load of track because we are going to need a thumping load of track if I am going to get a monorail for, uh, through the clouds from one sky island to the next. And hopefully, next week, next stream, we will see a monorail. Demon Goat, did you get to see the elevator ride up to the Sky Island? Uh, I don't know if you were on at that point. You were on after we did the, uh, the first copper elevator ride in the mansion. I don't know if you saw the... Uh, Right up here. Let's go on and do a daylight ride. And it lets me... That is an awful lot of brass, yes. And I actually made all the brass and crafted all the uh, components. This is not creative work here. I actually made all that brass scaffolding. Should have pushed the button when I first got here. I actually made all that brass scaffolding. Like bamboo scaffolding, you stand down here and you right click and hold on the base of it and it, it places it going up. So running it all the way up there did not require me flying up there for each one. I think I did, yeah. It'd be cool to see it again. Yes, it would be. So here comes the elevator. Let's move out here to where we can get a better look at it. And, you know, we can see the wiring coming around there and going up. And there's the elevator car coming down. Let's turn off the heads-up display for a minute here. We don't need all that clutter. The elevator pulley has so many uses. This is my first time using it, so pardon me if I'm very excited about it. If you're familiar with the Create Mod, you've seen elevators before, you've probably built them before. Uh, I'm very excited about it because this right here is my very first working elevator. Yeah, I was ambitious. I decided to put in an elevator all the way up to a Sky Island for my very first one. 
which is also why it looks a little chunky. I need to go back and redo it all in glass. That would be just spectacular. But I don't know, maybe glass with brass uh with 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 uh, brass bars on the corner. This is the brass bar here. So put glass pane and then brass bar on the corner. That could work. That would give a better better view. Start up. And off we go. This is the fastest I can get this elevator moving. As, as I've said, I'm using a reinforced motor. Ample electricity supply. It's just a long ride. Pity there's not more to see out a couple of the other a couple of the windows. It's just, you know, rather a lot of water. There is a village down there. Again, repurposed structures. Repurposed structures put an entire village on the ocean floor and redid it as a drowned ruin. It looks like a village that got uh you know, flooded by dam construction. If you've ever seen somebody go diving at a village that that was drowned in an artificially created lake, and like a hundred years later, somebody goes diving and then to see what what's left down there, and it's 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 really cool. I have a diving helmet and back tank, and I have been down there doing some extensive exploring. The Create Mod back tank and diving helmet give you 15 minutes of air, which is pretty, pretty amazing. And there we are. We have taken the elevator all the way to the top. There is no structural frame around it yet up here. Uh, there's just the motor and the pulley and the wiring right now. And over here where the monorail will eventually go, and there will be a pathway over to it. And the monorail will cross that gap and go to a much larger island. There's a thumping great gap that I'm going to attempt to bridge with the monorail and a very... Very long drop to the ocean below if uh, anything goes awry. Going to have to build in some safety measures for this monorail. Some of which will be decorative. Uh, but um, like the safety alcove that I tend to put in my subway tunnels, it needs to be there. Okie doke. It is getting close to the top of the hour, and I have run out of stuff to show off here. And I'm going to go on and wrap this up. There we go. Now, I'm going to be throwing to someone else, Willow Mist, who is another member of the truck community streamers, will be picking up in about five minutes with, I think she's doing an art stream this morning. I think she's going to be drawing. So we'll see what happens with that. So I'm going to send a raid her way. Um, and... Um, we will see what happens from there. In the meantime, uh, thank you for being here. It is always appreciated. Uh, it's always, always loved the, to have the companionship, as it says on the screen. Um, take an interest in the historical novel I'm writing. I do talk a lot about the Industrial Revolution and about the Victorian era because I've studied it extensively. I've written a tabletop role-playing game set in that era, and I'm writing a novel set in 1856. 
You can find the links for, for the novel and for the streaming schedule on the screen. Thank you for joining me, and let us, let me see if I can figure out Raid Channel. Channels you follow, Willemist, Start Raid. Here we go.